every attempt that I made to lose weight, I failed at because I was coming from a place of hate and a place of just not liking myself. And she's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. Right, so hello, my name she's is Jade Bro. Today I want to talk to you about my weight loss journey. God, it sounds so like dramatic when you say it like that but yeah i lost 15 kilograms i'm going to give you my best weight loss tips and just talk you through some of the worst decisions that i've also made in my weight loss journey you know, these days the idea of intentional weight loss is like <gasps> to some people, but I mean, if you're offended, if you're triggered by this, yeah, just don't watch. You saw the title, if you clicked, then that's your business. I was not born with the skinny jean. I was not born, ah, oh, skinny jean. I wasn't born naturally thin. I was always bigger. I was always bigger than all my friends, height wise, weight wise. Did I hate it? Mm. Actually, I was more insecure about my height, but I mean, that's another topic. Weight wise, I actually loved it. I had that, you know, <sighs> Kim Kardashian, well, okay, <laughs> not Kim Kardashian, I'm, I'm, I'm gassing myself. But I did have the small waist, the big bum, the big boobs. I had that kind of body. I kind of miss it actually, because now I'm like a toothpick. I was very, very happy with my body. And then I started to gain more weight. It kind of just crept up, crept up, and I started feeling really uncomfortable in my clothes. I started like squeezing, like, yeah. But you know what, it didn't bother me that much, so I was, I was fine. And then one day came along, one fateful day. In my area, there was this one guy, he was so obnoxious, he was so awful, he thought he was God's gift. He just used to... You know me, I just couldn't keep my mouth shut. Sometimes I need to tell people, like, stop. And then he turned to me and said to me, you're just jealous because you're fat. From that moment on, I genuinely thought that everyone thought I was fat. I went from being really confident in my body to being just so insecure, thinking that everyone thought I was fat. And this is the first tip I wanna give to anyone who wants to lose weight. Fat shaming does not work. I would wake up in the morning and tell myself, you need to lose weight because you're fat. I thought that looking at myself in the mirror and then saying horrible things in my head about my body would make me wanna lose weight. Every attempt that I made to lose weight, I failed at. And it's because I was coming from a place of hate and a place of just not liking myself and just sadness, really. Losing weight or any kind of change that you wanna make for yourself needs to come from within yourself. If you're trying to change for other people or to try and fit in, it's just not gonna work. You need to lose weight for yourself because you want to, because it's something that you want. The only time I started really losing weight was when my mum was diagnosed with diabetes. She was the last woman in my whole family who didn't have diabetes. I just thought to myself like, Oh my God, I'm next. At the time, I also had a friend who had type one diabetes and it had completely changed her life. And I just thought to myself, oh, oh no. If I can prevent this, then I'm going to. I had Google diabetes and I just decided I'm not gonna eat any sugar. Obviously, I didn't know that there was sugar in like bread and croissants and all that. I stopped, eat stopped eating sugar. I gave up cookies, biscuits, sweets, chocolate, all of that kind of stuff. I didn't eat birthday cake for years. And then when I did start eating these things again, it was like little bits here and there. Now, I'm not saying that you have to restrict sugar in order to lose weight. This is just what I did. And I lost a significant amount of weight, especially on my stomach area. That goes into my next tip. You need to have a solid reason. You need to know your why. To be motivated, you need to know the reason behind why you're doing it. People think I'm fat was not a good enough reason for me to actually go and lose the weight. The thing that actually made me lose weight was thinking about my health and thinking about what I wanted for my future. My next tip, it has to be a lifestyle change. I know someone's gonna sit here and think, oh, well, giving up sugar's not realistic. But actually, technically, when you regularly start eating sugar, you just get into that routine and it's kind of addictive. When you stop eating it, it's like it doesn't even exist and you actually forget about it. It's also technically something that you don't necessarily need in your diet. Whereas, say, if you went on like a low carb diet, I mean, carbs is like a necessity for a balanced, healthy meal. And bread is great, I mean, who doesn't love bread? Obviously, giving up sugar isn't for everyone. Just do whatever you think you are going to commit to. Before, all the other things that I tried that didn't work were just things that were so restrictive. And then by the middle of the day, I was like, oh, this, I'm gonna eat whatever I feel like. Then I would have a whole pizza and then I'd feel bad. And the next day I'd say, okay, 
new diet and do the same thing again. And a lot of people, when they get restricted for too long, they end up eating loads of food and binging. It's a mental thing. I mean, as human beings, we're just rebellious. At the same time though, you have to make sacrifices. You have to be in a calorie deficit. Don't do these fad diets, like I said about, you know, the low carb thing, because it doesn't matter, you have to be in a calorie deficit. Healthy does not equal low calorie and low calorie does not equal healthy. You have to be in a calorie deficit. Eating bags and bags of nuts, you're not gonna lose weight. Nuts are super healthy, really nutritious, but at the end of the day, they are very high in calorie. So you need to be careful with how many nuts you're eating. For me to be in a calorie deficit, I stopped eating sugar and I just replaced the high calorie stuff with low calorie alternatives. Instead of ketchup, I switched it out for a low sugar, low calorie hot sauce. I also portion controlled, so if you eat half the food, it's half the calories. If I went to a wedding and had like wedding cake, I would eat like a little bit of it and then give the rest to whichever little cousin is like sniffing around the table the most. So I did that and ended up losing around eight kilograms. So I ate all the things that I liked, but made a few changes and voila. My next tip is to exercise, be active. So at first I did not exercise at all, but I was active. I walked home instead of taking the bus. And sometimes I would take the long way. I'd walk and walk and walk. Even if I was going up escalators, I would walk up. Lifts and elevators, I never took them. I always took the stairs, except to, ugh, Sometimes at train stations, don't bother taking the stairs. One time I took the stairs at Goose Street Station and oh my, don't do that. Those little extras honestly do make such a difference. My stomach was flatter and my legs were a little bit more trim. I was really happy at my weight and then got signed to a modeling agency. So to answer the question, do you have to lose weight or be skinny to be a model? It depends on what you want to do. I mean, the modeling industry is very competitive. There are so many gorgeous girls out there. So at my biggest, I was a, well, I was actually a size 14, squeezing into a size 10. And I got signed to my first agency at a size UK 10, so US 6. But I kept being put forward for the same type of job. So I decided that I would lose maybe a little bit of weight to try and be more versatile. I started being put forward for those type of brands when I started to fit into the sample sizes for those brands. And really to lose that weight, I just thought I wanted to be the best version of myself as a model. So I started working out regularly. I didn't kill myself, but you know, a bit of cardio every day, you know, every now and again, doing some Pilates workouts, stuff like that. Daily cardio is a game changer. Even if it's just for 15 minutes a day, it's just gonna make such a difference. Not just with the way you look, but in general with your overall health. I mean, the reason why really that I started to exercise more is because I would look at people like Naomi Campbell and think, I wanna look like that when I'm 40, 50, 60. I wanna be going on jogs in my little short shorts when I'm 70. I will be an 100 year old Goddess. I started being more strategic with my eating. Instead of eating big meals, I would eat smaller, low calorie meals or snacks. Things were high volume, but low calorie. Low fat Greek yogurt, non-dairy yogurt, rice cakes, popcorn, things that are just low calorie, high volume that you can eat loads of and not even care. I just wanna to touch upon something that I said earlier and just make it like super clear. You do not need to lose weight to become a model. If you want to lose weight for yourself to be the best version of yourself, go ahead. But please don't think that losing weight is gonna guarantee you some sort of success because you never know. Success in the modeling industry goes way, way deeper than just being slim. It's about the whole package together and how you're marketable to the right clients. My advice to girls who don't have the stereotypical kind of model look is to network. Network with photographers, stylists, just anyone that you can work on modeling projects with. Apply for agencies, apply for competitions, apply twice. And Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. These days I'll go on jobs and I'll meet other models who are literally so much different than your stereotypical model, but they are killing it in the game and they've done it themselves. They've built their brand by themselves on Instagram and just rocked it. I just wanna remind you guys that we are all unique. So number one, do not compare your body to anyone else's or try and be someone else. Just be the best version of you. Number two, your body is unique in a way that what works for you might not work for someone else and vice versa. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. She's a mama.